Hello there. Welcome to this republishing of the first episode of Joy Sightings. In 2016, I started making extra podcasts called Joy Sightings and included them at random intervals in the feed of the Daily Bible Reading Podcast. In the Joy Sightings podcasts, I mainly recorded the parables of Safed the Sage by William E. Barton and a few other stories that have been meaningful to our family. After a couple of years, I moved my collection of parables and stories into a separate podcast, which you can find at joysightings.info. From time to time this year, I will include some of these stories again in the daily NLT and daily GNT Bible Reading Podcast feeds. In this and several other episodes, I would like to read parables of Safed the Sage. Safed the Sage was the pen name of William Eleazar Barton, who lived from 1861 to 1930. He was a congregational pastor, and he published these parables in their Sunday school magazine. He was also a noted expert on the life of Abraham Lincoln. Barton's parables are fun to read because of the mimicking of King James English and also because Barton highlights certain words by capitalizing them. The Dog and the Limited Now I rode on a fast express train called The Limited, and we went through a country where there were many farms, and the train went like the driving of Jehu. And there was a farmhouse that stood near unto the track, but back, as it were, about the space of a furlong, and in the farmhouse dwelt a farmer, and the farmer had a dog. And when the train drew nigh, the dog started from the farmhouse toward the train, and he barked furiously, and he ran swiftly, and I marveled that he could run so swiftly, and that at the same time he could bark so furiously. But with all his barking he could not make so much noise as the train, neither with all his running could he overtake it. And the path that he made in his running was a great parabolic curve, for he started before the train entered the farm, running toward the train and going east, for the train was going toward the west. But as the train ran on and stopped not, the dog ran south, and when the train was going by and not even hesitating, he curved so that he ran southwest and then west, and at the west side of the farm he fell into a ditch, rolled over and over, and got up and shook himself, and stood for a moment, and cursed the train, and then returned home. And the train went on. And a month thereafter I rode on the same train, and behold, the same dog did all the things that he had done before. And three months thereafter I rode again on the same train, and the same fool dog was still getting experience in the same manner, but learning nothing therefrom. And I saw that he was even like unto some men, who might be brayed in a mortar with a pestle, yet would not their folly depart from them. For even as that dog watcheth daily for that train, rising every morning and listening for it, and chasing it through the farm, and tumbling in the ditch on the west line of the farm, so there are men who chase their follies continually, and learn nothing from their tumbles. And what would the dog have done with the train if he had caught it? In these stories, Safed's wife is called Keturah, and it's because of her that I sometimes call Gail, my wife, Keturah. The Moving Pictures We took a journey, I and Keturah, and we changed cars in a certain city, and we lodged there one night in an inn. And we walked abroad after we had dined, and it was evening, and the shops were closed, but the movies were open. And we gave two dimes unto a damsel in a glass cage, and we went in and sat down. 
and we beheld a moving picture. The theme whereof was the reward of virtue, and it was concerning a young woman who loved art, with a capital A, and who appeared not to love dishwashing. And she left her home and went to a great city and studied art, and she was subject to great temptations, all of which were shown to us, and the way she was tempted was a plenty. But nothing tempted her to go back home and help her mother wash the dishes in the kitchen sink. So she came to the very brink, and the man who tempted her most was a millionaire in disguise. And the more he tempted her, the more he loved her. And when he found that he could not have her without marrying her, he offered to marry her, and they were married. So the reward of virtue was cash in the bank. And we sat through this highly moral movie, and we yawned, both of us. Then I spoke to Katura and said, There are two more films. Shall we stay for them? And she said, This stuff doth not amuse me. And I said, It is not up to our speed. Let us go. So we went while the going was good. And as we wandered, we came to a downtown church, where the rich had moved away and the poor remained, and the door was open, and we went in, and there was a prayer meeting, and there were not as many people there as there were at the movies, and they who loved the Lord spoke there to each other, and comforted one another, and lifted their prayers to God for courage and for the day's job. And we saw in their faces, and heard in their words, such dramas and tragedies as no movie man ever invented. And the reward of virtue for them was faith to go on, and the approval of conscience, and the peace of God. And we returned to the inn, and I answered Keturah, and said, that also was a moving picture, and it was great stuff. And Keturah said, That was the real thing. That was life. And when we knelt beside our bed that night, we prayed for both companies of people. <laughs>